My name is Kodrut Neumann and I am an ENT consultant working at One Ashford Hospital and my ENT practice is in East Kent Hospitals. In my day-to-day -day practice I treat both adults and children and approximately a third of my practice are children with various uh, ear, nose and throat conditions. I specialise in, in ear disease and this is my interest and my passion. There are a number of causes for ear discharge and they depend on where the infection starts. It can either be in the ear canal and that is called an otitis externa or it can involve the tympanic membrane, the eardrum and the middle ear which is the clockwork of the ear. Essentially um, you want to think about it as the sound transmission mechanism and it works very much like a Swiss watch. And there is also the inner ear which is the electronic part of the ear and that is a separate entity. But you can differentiate between the, the uh, sites of infection. If patients have an um, onotitis externa, i.e. an infection in the outer part of the ear canal, they would present with something like discharge that can be on occasion smelly, they may have itching and they may have pain. There's also an element of hearing loss and these are the symptoms that alert the patients um, to the fact that there is a problem. When it comes to the middle ear, the symptoms are a little different and it all depends whether we're dealing with an acute infection or a chronic infection. So with the acute infection, people may have pain preceding the uh, discharge or they may have a high temperature and generally this condition is called acute otitis media and it's more common in children. It starts usually with pain and the temperature, not necessarily together all the time and it continues with discharge and the pain subsides. When we're dealing with chronic otitis media that means that there is a an infection in the middle ear, the clockwork of the ear, that has been persisting. Sometimes the discharge for that condition, and in fact most of the time, the discharge is painless. So people don't have itching or, or pain, there's just a discharge that can stop and start and they may have hearing loss and on occasion they may complain of dizziness. This is a completely separate condition and acute otitis media can progress to uh, chronic otitis media. Now there are a number of conditions that can cause that and by that I mean either a hole in the eardrum which may be a perforation um, or it can be a pocket of retraction i.e. the eardrum has a dimple that tends to collect skin or at the other end of the spectrum when the infection has gone into the middle ear we deal with a condition called cholesteatoma and cholesteatoma is essentially skin in the wrong place. Um, the skin that normally sits on the outer part of the eardrum starts invading the middle ear and can destroy the delicate mechanism of hearing. It can cause some other issues, it can progress further and attack structures such as nerve that moves the face, the facial nerve, it can go into the balance system and cause dizziness and on very rare occasion it can spread upwards uh, to the brain. The floor of the brain is essentially the roof of the ear and in very uh, rare occasion there can be intracranial complications. Well, it all depends on whether there's, we're dealing with otitis externa or otitis media. You need to examine the ear very carefully and that's best done with the microscope. And most often, because the ear is full of discharge, you need to microsuction the ear, i.e. use a mini hoover to clean the pus and the debris out. That will allow a careful inspection of the ear canal and see whether the infection is there and also a view of the eardrum to make sure it's intact or not. We tend to also do culture and sensitivity, i.e. we take a little um, cotton woolly swab and send away for analysis and that will tell us what kind of bugs there are in the ear. So the treatment can be directed towards those particular bugs specifically.
Again, it depends a little bit on what the condition is. For example, in otitis externa, the, the treatment, the most important treatment is to microsuction the ear, to clean the ear out, get the debris out and put drops in. There are a lot of misconceptions about antibiotic drops and, and people are reluctant to have them when they have ear discharge, worrying that a hole in the eardrum can cause a, a toxicity to the inner ear. In fact, this is not true. There are very um, many varieties of drops that are not autotoxic at all to the uh, inner ear, i.e. they don't damage it. And there are also some which are still safe to use for a short period of time. So otitis externa is generally treated with keeping the ear dry and that holds true for all types of discharge, discharging ears, cleaning it out and using drops appropriately, sometimes informed by the culture and sensitivity swab results. Occasionally we need to put some little dressings in, like a sponge that draws the drops in and keeps the ear canal open if the ear canal is very inflamed and doesn't allow the drops to penetrate. When it comes to otitis media, there are a number of other tests we tend to do. A hearing test will tell us what's the mechanism of the ear doing and also if it's chronic otitis media, patients generally require surgery to address that and there are a number of imaging um, investigations such as a CT scan and MRI scan that informs the surgeon of the anatomy of that ear and what needs doing in terms of surgery. So with otitis media, acute otitis media, that, that's more common in children, it can be treated with simple analgesic for a day or two, so painkillers and something to bring the temperature down, because the majority of them are caused by viral infections. However, if the discharge doesn't settle, then they will benefit from having antibiotics, oral antibiotics. When it comes to chronic otitis media, i.e. a condition that persists, Again, careful examination under a microscope, microsuction and drops will work best at addressing the ear infections acutely. However, most patients then require surgery either to repair the eardrum or to repair the mechanism of hearing or deal with the infection that may be deeply seated. I'm going to make a special mention to one type of otitis externa which can occur in patients who are either elderly, diabetic or under medication that brings the immune system down. These people have a, a, a very severe deeply seated pain with otitis externa and that does not respond to medication topically. These are patients who would need uh, admission to hospital and intravenous antibiotics and more complex intervention. If you experience any um, of the above symptoms, if you have ear discharge and you are concerned about your hearing, suggest that you see your GP who will then be able to examine you and address the symptoms appropriately. We will be very happy to see you at One Ashford and, and do all the procedures that I mentioned above as your doctor will, will see fit. If I can leave you with one message is if you have a discharging ear, please keep it dry and make sure no water goes in at the bath time. And that's best done with cotton wool or Vaseline. Mm -hmm.